Okay, I'm going live. Is it showing up yet? Uh, happy wash day. Good evening and welcome to Indigenous Storytime. My name is Tamara Miyasato, and this evening I am honored to invite our guest, uh, Johan Echohawk Atkinson. And so he is a storyteller and a youth counselor joining us from the Pawnee and Simshian nations. And he is tuning in live from Alaska. So, um, Diane Yahi, welcome. Um, we are so honored to have you here with us, Johan. And I think we might have be having some technical difficulties that I can't hear you. There you are. And Delawan, thank you. And Doixon and Doixon, thank you. Uh, Johan Echohawk Atkinson, DYU, Lakhibu Diptegu, Mescatla, Alaska, Dibulwatku. Hello, how are you? My name is Johan Echohawk Atkinson. I'm of the Wolf Clan of the Simpsian Nation here in beautiful Metlakatla, Alaska. My mother is from the Pawnee Nation and my father is of the Simpsian Nation. And I'm honored to be able to be here with Indigenous Storytime. So welcome everybody, welcome for, to this wonderful event that Indigenous Storytime is hosting. And first I wanna be able to, I wanna share my appreciation and my gratitude for everybody that is making Indigenous Storytime happen. It is a beautiful thing when we get to share our traditional stories when we get to learn from our traditional stories and teach the young people and to be able to keep these values strong because our traditional stories are, have always been a huge part of our teaching. Our traditional stories and our indigenous stories have always been a huge part of our lives to inspire, to heal and to pass on the knowledge so before I begin, before I share my story and tell about it, I want to open this up with the song. And this is a song here from my res in Metlakatla, Alaska, the Simpsian Nation. This is an auntie and uncle song, because in our traditional way, aunties and uncles play a very important role in raising and teaching our youth. How are you? How are you? Hey. Hey, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, 
the so the story that I am honored to be able to share with Indigenous Story Time and everybody tuning in is a very very old story that has been passed down generations upon generations, and the story is one of my favorites because it teaches our young people to always believe in ourselves. It teaches to have that mutual, mutual respect for one another. And there are many other lessons in the story, but I wanna leave it up to you all to identify them. I wanna share it and I wanna leave it to you all to think about the lessons and why it is important to pass on these lessons. So this, this story, like I said, originates from the Simpsian nation. And everything that I'm wearing today is to honor my Simpsian culture. The cedar hat that I am wearing is made out of the bark. And I'm wearing my Simpsian vest. I got the eagle feathers in front to honor my wife and children. They are from the Eagle Clan. And I wear the wolf representing my clan and who I am and where I come from. So without further ado, the Simshan story, the box of songs. Long ago, when the world was just created, when everything was just made in this world, it was a lot different than how we see it today. In fact, the world, when it was first created, the animals were able to talk to one another. The animals were able to talk and communicate with humans. And one of the most amazing things, when the world was just created, the sky that we see today was actually a lot lower than what it is now. In fact, the sky, it was so low that it made everybody walk bent over because the sky was right there on your back. And the only time you could straighten your back was when you would be lying down. And in my Simpsian culture, we have a supernatural being named Clamsham. And in Clamsham, I like to tell people he's like a Simpsian superhero. He could take the shape and form of any animal and anything. Many know him as Raven. And Raven is a trickster. Raven is responsible for releasing the sun and the moon and the stars. Well, Clamsham, when he's in his human form, he's a, he's a giant, 15 feet tall. He's very powerful and he has magical powers. Now Clamsham was walking one day. He was walking around on the earth and he was walking bent over like this because the sky was right there on his back all day long. He traveled very far with the sky right there on his back. And at the end of the day, when he would lie down, his back would pop, snap, crackle, and pop. Oh, it feels so good. Finally, I don't have to walk bent over. So the morning came, Clamsham, our supernatural Simshian being. He wanted to stand up, but he couldn't because the sky was right there. So Clamsham said, enough is enough. And he looked for the most longest and strongest and biggest stick he could find. And he grabs it and he pushed a stick on the sky. Then he pushes it up as hard as he can. And the sky went up to where you see it today. 
and everybody was so happy. But something happened that nobody anticipated. Something happened when the sky went up. The box of all the beautiful songs of the world got caught with the sky and was now stuck in the sky. Every beautiful song that we have in this world was now stuck in the sky. So all the flute players, when they would play their flutes, it would sound like this. Nothing. When the birds, when they would try and sing their beautiful songs, it would sound like this. Nothing. And it's made everybody very sad. Everybody was saying, oh no, our, all the beautiful songs in the world are stuck in the sky because of clamshell. Oh no, and they're crying. And everybody was sad. And during, while everybody was crying and everybody was sad, all the birds of the world, shh, they took to the sky and they all gathered together. And they said, we will fly up and get these songs. We will fly up and save the day and bring all these beautiful songs back to the world. Raven, he walked up. Oh, oh. I will fly up and get these songs. Hawk, he flew in, being the fastest bird in the forest. Shoo, shoo, no, me, I will fly up. Eagle, he had the giant wingspan, the most strongest bird in the forest. He goes, stand aside. I will fly up and get these songs. Even tiny little Tweety Bird, little Chickadee was probably about this big. He flew in with his little tiny wings and his wings were about this big and his little tiny wings. And he landed amongst all the birds and he says, I will fly up and get these songs. Now all the birds, they seen the little tiny Tweety Bird and they looked up at the songs and they says, no chickadee, you are too small. You are too weak. You cannot fly up and get these songs. What are you thinking of? Now this made little tiny chickadee feel bad. But he was always told in his life that no matter what anybody says, we have to believe in ourselves. So he didn't reply. He got up and he walked away. He flew over to the bushes and he was watching behind the log of all the birds talking on who was gonna get the songs. And they were arguing and I said, finally I said, okay, Raven, you will fly up tomorrow morning and get these songs. And if you are not able to fly up, then we will have Hawk and then maybe Eagle. So all the birds took off. Woof. They went home to their nest, to the forest. And when they were fall, when they fell asleep, the only thing on their mind was that box of all the beautiful songs of the world that are still stuck up in the sky from Clamsham. Now, it seemed like as soon as they went to bed, daybreak was here. All the birds, they jumped right up, especially Raven. Raven jumped up. And when Raven walks, Ravens like to, they have that waddle, that strut, and hop around. Raven, he hopped out of his nest, flew down to where all the birds were gathering, which was on the side of the mountain. And they were there waiting for Raven. Raven, he flew in. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Today is the day where I fly up 
and get all these beautiful songs of the world. I, Raven, will save the day and we will have beautiful songs once again. Stand aside, stand aside. And all the birds were watching. Hawk was there, owl, albatross, crow, robin, bougie, even little chickadee. Little tiny bird was behind his lawn with his big eyes watching everybody. And Raven, he walked to the side of the mountain and he bent his little raven kneecaps and he counted down. And in my language, cool is one, cool is two, Kuli is three. And they all counted down, cool. And he got ready, Kupo, Kuli, whoo. Raven took off, big giant cloud of dust underneath him. And all the birds, all their beaks just dropped. And they're watching Raven fly higher and higher and higher, straight up. And the only thing on Raven's mind was the spot of songs. And he was flying straight toward it, giving it his all. And he's flying for hours. Three hours go by straight up. And he's giving it his all. And his wings start to get so tired but he must give it his all. He must get these songs. And that was wings. After four hours, they feel like they're a hundred pounds. And he's trying to lift up his wings and his whole body is shaking him and he's trying to give it his all. And then he pushes his wings too hard. His right wing cramped up. Oh no. And he's trying to flap with his other wing. And he's like, no, I must get these songs. I must get, and his other wing also cramped up and he goes oh no and he starts falling toward the earth and all the birds they were watching raven with their little bird binoculars and they're saying oh no here comes raven and raven was coming down big ball of fire and he hit the earth Poof! big cloud of dust and when the dust settled Raven's head popped out. He had mud all over his face. He had a big brand sticking out of his feathers. He had gravel all around him. And he says, oh, oh, those songs, they're too far. Nobody will ever get them. What are we going to do? Just then, he says, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go home, we're gonna get some rest and we're gonna let the fastest bird in the forest. And he opened up his wings. It was like one of those old Kung Fu movies whenever he'd move his wings. Everybody go home, we will get some rest. And I will fly up the fastest bird in this forest. So everybody went home to their nests, to the forest, to the grass, to the bushes, wherever their nests were at. And they were sleeping, thinking about Hawk. And they were saying, maybe Hawk can do it. He is the fastest bird in the forest. Ooh, exciting. And everybody was just waiting for tomorrow. They, they couldn't wait. It was, it was like the, the day before Christmas. They were so excited. Morning time came early. It seemed like as soon as they went to sleep, the morning time was here. Hawk jumped out of bed. Whoosh. Today is the day. Flew out this door. Whoosh. To the side of the mountain where all the birds were waiting for him. He landed amongst all the birds and he was really strutting his stuff. And he says, today is the day where I fly up and get all the beautiful songs of the world. Me, Hawk, will save the day. Stand aside. And everybody gave Hawk some space. 
and he walked to the side of the mountain. And everybody counted to three. Cool. And he bent his little hawk kneecaps. Goopo. And the ground started to shake under him. Gooly. Hawk took up faster than a speeding bullet. Shoo. Some say he even broke the sound barrier. He's going straight up higher and higher. Nobody has ever seen a bird go that fast. All they could do was just have their beaks drop, watching Hawk go higher and higher and higher. And he's flapping his wings now for three hours, four hours, straight up. He gets farther than Raven. And Raven is saying he might do it. Look at him go. And he's watching Hawk with his, with his little Raven binoculars. And I'm saying, he's going to make it. He's going to make it. And Hawk was giving it his all. Whoo. 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 Straight up. It's going on six hours now. And Hawk's wings are feeling so tired. I felt like a hundred pounds every single time he would lift his wings up, but he had to push through it because he has to get these songs and he's given it his all. And he pushed his wings too hard and his left wing started to cramp up. He goes, no, no. And he's flapping and he's giving his all with this other, with this other wing. And he pushed his wing too hard and that wing also cramped up and him too started to fall toward the earth no and he started falling <laughs> watch out <laughs> Houston we got a problem <laughs> and he hit the earth <laughs> big cloud of dust and when the dust settled hot poked his head out he had dirt and mud all over his face he had two branches sticking out of his feathers, gravel in his body. And he says, oh, oh, those, oh, hold on, I've been quarantined for too long. Those songs up there are too far. We will never get them. And as soon as he said that, Eagle, he says, never say never. I should have done this to begin with. Stand aside. And all the birds, they were seeing the massive wingspan of eagle. Seven, almost eight feet wide. He says, what you all need is power. Look at this wing. Meet me here tomorrow and I will fly up and get these songs. Now all the birds were watching. Blue Jay, Albatross, even little Chickadee, little Tweety Bird was still watching behind the log. And he has his big eyes and he goes, I want to go up and get these songs, but they're not going to let me. And he was thinking, hmm. So everybody went home to their nest and they fell asleep. Sunrise was here before they know before they knew it. Eagle whoo, took to the sky. Shh, started to fly toward the side of the mountain. And he could see all the birds with her. Birds have come from near and far. Every bird you could imagine of all colors were there. There was puffin. There was crow, there was parrot. Every bird in the world was there watching eagle, getting ready to land amongst them. Even little chickadee, this little tiny bird with little tiny wings was watching behind the lawn. And boy, did he wanna go up and try, but nobody believed in him, but that's okay. 
because as long as he believed in himself. So Eagle, he landed amongst all the birds. Boom. He says, I am here to get these songs. I should have got these songs to first to begin with. For you all need strength. Look at this wing. He started flexing. He said, stand aside, stand aside. And all the birds, they moved out of Eagle's way. And as Eagle walked up, he was really strutting his stuff. And he walked up to the side of the mountain. And he says, count to three. And I will fly up and get these songs. So all the birds together, they said, cool. And Eagle, he bent his little eagle kneecaps keeping his eye on the prize. Quilly! And the ground started to shake just then. Little Tweety Bird behind the, behind the bushes, he couldn't take it no more. He bushed out all the bushes and he flew toward Eagle, landed on his back. And he looked at all the birds and he goes, and Eagle, Quilly! Took off faster and harder than any bird has ever, ever gone. And little Tweety Bird was on his back, hanging on for dear life. Good Tweety Bird, because Eagle was flapping his wings so hard. Whoo, whoo. And Tweety Bird, his little face is getting pushed down and he's trying to hang on. And he wants to scream, but he can't. He doesn't want Eagle to know he's on his back. So he's hanging on and he's screaming in silent. And Eagle's going higher, whoo, whoo higher and higher and faster and stronger than any bird has ever been. And now Tweety Bird is hanging on for dear life. He's trying to rethink like, is this a good idea? And he's hanging on. Eagle has no idea he's on his back. And Eagle goes higher, straight up. And he's using his Eagle vision to see the box of beautiful songs up in the sky. He could see it clearly, even though it was hundreds of miles away. And he was headed straight for it, giving it his all. Whoo! Whoo! And every time he would flap his wings, he would go up 20 feet, 25 feet, 30 feet. And little chickadee was hanging on for dear life, silent screaming. And then finally, Eagle flapping his wings for four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. The sun is now starting to set. And Eagle could see the box of songs. The box of songs of the world getting closer and closer with each flap of his wings and this motivates him he could see it getting closer so he flaps his wings harder Whew. but then his wings start to get oh so tired but the box of songs are so close so he has to push it as hard as he can seemed like every time he'd lift up his wings, oh, they were like 500 pounds and his whole entire body would be shaking. And little Tweety Bird would be in the back trying to hang on and say, what's going on up there? And then Eagle finally, his wing cramped up. No, and he's like, no, I must get these songs. And he's flapping and the songs, they're oh, so close, he can see them. They're like just 20 minutes away. And he's flapping with only one wing and he's going all over the place. And his wing cramps up. And he goes, no, just then Tweety Bird jumps off his back, jumps on Eagle's face and kicks off Eagle's face, sending Eagle down and little Tweety Bird's little tiny wings. 
He was flapping, giving it his all, and he was going off because the wind up there was pushing him. He was trying to go straight, but the wind was making him go in circles. It was going the wrong way, and he was just, he gave it his all. He was so close, and he knew that he had to believe in himself, and Eagle was to hit the earth. All the birds gathered around him. What happened? Eagle, what happened? He says, we will never get these songs. Right when he said that, little Tweety Bird was thousands of feet up in the air, flapping his little wings, giving it his all. And he could see the box of songs and he flapped his wings so hard. He gave it his all and everything that he finally reached the song. And to, once, once Tweety Bird, he looked at the songs and he looked at himself and the songs and himself and the songs. He couldn't believe it. And then at that moment, Eagle, he says, we will never get these songs. Those songs up there. And all the birds, they looked up and they seen little Tweety Bird holding the songs above his head. Dun, dun, dun. And he has his, the songs under one wing and he's starting to come in trying to flap with one wing and the parts of his other wing and he's giving his all, he's all over the place. And all the birds are watching. What, how is this possible? And Tweety Bird, he landed, poof, amongst all the birds. And he has the box of songs and all the birds are looking at him. He's looking at the birds and it's no one saying a word. They're just staring at each other with their beaks dropped. They're looking at Tweety Bird. And Tweety Bird, he can't believe he did it himself. So he's doing the same thing. And it was a long, awkward silence. Until finally, Eagle, he broke silence. He goes, no, hey, Tweety Bird, give those songs to me. Give that box to me. And you know what Tweety Bird said? He said, no, I'm not gonna give these songs to you. And let me tell you why. And he started really petting the box and adoring the box. He opened it up, the most beautiful sounds. He goes, let me tell you why. When I told you that I wanted to go up and get these songs, you said I was too small. When I told you that I wanted to go up and give up my all, you said I wasn't strong enough. You said that I was too different. Well, look what I got. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And he opened up the box of beautiful songs. The most beautiful songs came out of this box. He says, I'm going to give the most beautiful songs of world to all the most smallest birds of this world and he gave the most beautiful song to all the small birds of this world to robin to chickadee to sparrow they said let me tell you why because for all you other big birds albatross puffin Eagle, raven, crow, owl, hawk. Know that when you are in the forest and you hear the most beautiful songs being sung, they are coming from the smallest birds to remind us that we always have to believe in ourselves. Because in our lives, we're going to have people that don't believe in us. Throughout our lives, we're going to have people say, maybe you're not strong enough. Or in our lives, we're going to have people that are going to say, maybe we're too different. But we can learn from little Tweety Bird, from little Chickadee. As long as you believe in yourself, none of that matters. So all the small birds of the world, they took off to the forest. Until this day, when you hear 
the most beautiful songs being sung, those long songs being sung in a forest from the bird. But it remind us that all those songs are being sung from the smallest birds. To remind you to always believe in yourself. To remind you to always be kind to others. To remind us, no matter what anybody says, you put your heart into it. It can be done. And I'm very fortunate where I my home is next to the forest. And in the spring and the summertime, I know all of us have heard those songs being sung before daybreak, during the day, during sunset. And remember that their songs are sung to remind us, and I'm gonna say it again, to remind us to always believe in yourself no matter what anybody says. If anybody says you're not strong enough, you're too different, you can't do it. Remember Tweety Bird and how he flew up and he proved everybody wrong because he believed in himself. And those traditional values that we learn from the birds, from the animals of this world, were passed down to us humans. And ever since then, we have always been kind to one another. Ever since then, we always share the words where we support one another. We never said, I don't believe in you. We say, I believe in you. Do your best. And it's always been like that for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And it's not going to stop with us. Those traditional values are not going to stop with you. We're going to keep them strong. We're going to pass them on to the generations. And if you're not too sure on how to pass those on, on how to teach those values, then sit the people down and your family and your friends and say, let me tell you a story about Tweety Bird and share the story. Tell them, I know it's, I know a very ancient Simpson story that has was created on the West Coast. Tell them the story because I don't, don't matter who you are, you're a young person, you're a teenager, you're a young man, a young woman, you're an adult, you're an auntie, an uncle, you're an elder. Everybody enjoys a good story because our stories have always been in our lives and has always been told to teach, to inspire and to heal. And I guarantee you that if you get your family and friends around and you tell this story It'll, it'll be something, it'll be a, a time they will never forget. And they will learn more through a traditional story than they could ever learn with electronics, with TV. Because us telling our stories, our words have power to them. That's why our traditional stories are so important. So... That story was taught to me. Johan, I'll tell you the story of the Box of Songs, one of our oldest Simpson stories, but you have to teach others. So now I'm gonna pass the story on to you all. So now you all could say, I know a traditional Simpson story. Let me tell you, let me share it with you. Let's turn off the TV, let's turn off our phones. Let's gather like our ancestors have always done for thousands of years and tell that story of little Tweety Bird. And next time you hear those beautiful songs, if you tell that story, next time you're, the young people in your family, even the adults in your family, hear the beautiful songs being sung in the forest, they will know and they will always be reminded to believe in themselves. And when all the beautiful songs came back to this world, 
one of the beautiful songs. There's a song I'm going to share you through the flute. Doixism, doixism. In my language, that means thank you. Thank you all for tuning in and learning the story. And I want to challenge you all, now that you have learned the story, to tell it yourselves, to tell it to your family and friends. And it's okay if you don't get the story right the first time. When I first told the story, I got everything wrong. Everything. But the more times you tell it, the better you will get at it. You have to be like Tweety Bird. You believe in yourself and pass on these values, pass on these traditional ways of life that we have always had to teach, to inspire. Thank you all so much for listening to my story. Thank you all. Thank you for Indigenous Storytime for making this happen. My hands go up to you and I thank everybody for that is responsible, that puts in the time and the work and the volunteer dedication that they have to make this happen. Thank you all. Thank you all. And I look forward to sharing these stories with you. And I look forward to knowing that there are people out there still telling stories because that's what we need in this world. We need to be able to connect. We need to be able to tell these stories to our young people, to the adults, Tell it to yourself. Go into the woods, sit next to a stream, and tell the story. Storytelling has always been in our, in our lives. And it's not going to stop with me. And it's not going to stop with you. Doixen, doixen. Thank you all. Thank you so much for your beautiful story and for your time and what uh, what good medicine to hear on this evening and such good information and knowledge and wisdom from our, our animal relatives. I really hope that you um, all enjoyed the story. Um, so thank you for tuning in. And I really hope to have you, you back, Johan, to share Absolutely. some more of your, your stories. Yep, I look forward to it. Thank you all. Uh -huh. have uh, a good, happy night. Washti. good night. Good night.